Hey guys, what is up? So tonight I'm just going to be making a short video going over the PROM, which stands for uh, Programmable Read-Only Memory. I got a ton of requests to review this, and I think we're just making it harder than, uh, than it needs to be. So uh, the whole idea of a PROM is that it can be programmed once, and then that's it. We can't program it anymore after that. And uh, basically, um, once you our, our prom when, when when it's working, it uh, it controls our our processor or, or our program really. So let's let's uh, take a look at this. You may have seen from class that we have um, so we have like six lines going down. Can you see that? Nope. Okay. There we go. And kind of goes like this, right? And then we have our our uh, little not gate here to account for all of our possible input combinations, right? So that goes down, and then we'll have A, B, and then C, right? And and when we have three inputs, A, B, and C, then we have a total of eight possible input combinations, right? Because let's go ahead and look at our truth table. We'll, uh, we'll put it over here. A, B, C, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. That should be 8, right? 4 plus 4, yep. So that's that's our eight possible input combinations. Now we have to put this onto our our uh, our prom. So let's draw out eight lines because we'll need to implement all of these. So I'll draw it like this. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and you remember when we derived SOP expressions from our truth table that we had to, if there was a 1 at 0, 0, 0, then we'd have to say that our function was A0, B0, C0. So we, here we have A0, B0, and C0. So, okay, so over here we have. Zero, zero, one, so we need A naught, B naught, C. So A naught, B naught, C. And then we have A naught, B, C naught. So A naught, B, C naught. And then A naught, B, C. So A naught, B, C. And then A, B naught, C naught. So A, B not C not and then A B not C so A B not C and then A B C not so A B and then C not and then lastly we have A B C so A B C all right. So now that we have that, we need to put them all into little AND gates, I guess, to keep the signal from grounding. All right. And then we'll draw out our eight lines a little further. Oh, got to go farther than that. All right. And then we can have as many functions as we want. We could have, we could have one function coming, one function, one line coming down all of here, or we could have two, we could have three, we could have or five thousand and seven. It, it doesn't matter. But I, I mean, we'd, I think we'd run out of combinations. But still, <laughs> that we can have as many functions as we want, and the, your number of bits is the number of your functions. So. Let's have eight functions. Let's 
So we're going to need eight more lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gotta draw. I got to learn how to draw better. So, and these functions can be anything. And we, we define them as whatever we want or whatever we're told they are. They can be they can be your output towards a vending machine. I think we did that one in class. Or uh, your inputs to your flip-flops. This could be uh, your input for a D flip-flop. Or these can be your two inputs for a JK flip-flop. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order they're in. It just matters what the function is. And we can make that up if we wanted to. <laughs> so let's have our functions. Excuse my voice cracking. I don't know what's going on. Um, let's... Let's call this one D7, D6, D5, D4, D3, D2, D1, D0. We're, this is going to all go to our flip-flops. It's going to control our flip-flops. But let's only define D7, 6, 5, and 4. So D7, D6, D5. Nope, I don't think you guys can see that. D5 and D4. Uh, there we go. So let's let's. I'm, uh, I don't know if I have enough room. So let's call. Let's make this up. Let's say D7 is just one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, and D6 is zero one zero one. 0, 1, 0, 1. D5 is, I don't know, um, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then D4 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, so look at this. If we have, if we're at address, okay, address, bit, address, bits, address, bits, okay, words, bits. Hopefully that makes some sense. So if we're at address 000, zero, zero so if we're at address 0 in hexadecimal, well, we know that D7 is 1. So have a 1 right there. And why is my paper so bright? I hope that focuses better. And D6 is 0, right? So we don't touch that. D5 is 1. And D4 is 0, so we don't touch that. And all these are zeros because, uh, well, I didn't define them, so we're not using them. And so our address, 001, so just address 1 in hexadecimal, we have 0, and then 1, so we'll have a 1 right here, and then a 1 again, and then a 0. So for address 2, we, we have 1, and then 0, 1, 0. And then for address 3, we have 0, 1, 1, 0, and then for address uh, 4, it looks like we have um, 1, 0, 0, 1, so 1, 0, 0, 1, and then for address 5, it looks like we have 0, 1, 0, 1, so 0, 1, 0, 1, and then address uh, 6, we have 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, again, yep, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then at uh, address, uh, voice crack again, address 7, we have 0, 1, 0, 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1. So that, that is, um, our, we just programmed it. <laughs> so now we have our inputs to our D flip flops, and, uh, and again, it can be whatever. They're not always D flip flops. They can be your output to a vending machine. I could have defined D zero to be your output for the vending machine and made it an entirely new combination, and then we'd have um, uh, our wires connecting on these intersections. So, so uh, what can we do with this? Well, um, you may have also seen from class that we have. Um, kind of a multiplexer looking thing, but it's not. It's not a multiplexer, it just kind of looks like that. Um, so we have our inputs, S2, S1, S0, 
and then we have all of our outputs four five six seven eight this one was d7 d6 d5 d4 and that's all we accounted for so who really cares what those are and s2 is our most significant bit which which was a right a is the most significant so we have a, B, and C down here. So, so let's if we are at, if we are at uh, address zero zero zero. So we have zero zero and zero all going into here. What will our output be? Well, we know it'll our D seven will be one, D six will be zero, D five will be one, and D four will be zero. So, for our first trial, we'll have. 0, 0, 0, and we have 1, 0, 1, 0, and these are all just going to be zeros no matter what. So now let's let's do the next one. What happens if we are at address 0, 0, 1? So we have 0, 0, 1. Well, uh, our D7 through D4 is just going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. So we're just going to have 0, 1, 1, 0. So let's let's do the last one now. Uh, for address one one one, so just dot 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 one one one, then dot 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 dot. Okay, we will be at zero one zero one. So zero one zero one, and so depending on our our input, that's just going to be our output. It's really that simple. And like I said, these could go to anything. These could go to a, a flip-flop or, or to some other function that we, we don't have or anything. <laughs> um, so let's look at the words and the bits. So words are the number of, of addresses. So we have uh, eight possible input combinations. So eight words, right? And we have eight right because I, I, I made eight so we have eight uh, functions so we have eight bits so eight words eight bits can you see that so that's all that means so let's make a little a little table for our words and our bits um, so we'll have our address uh, how do you spell address that looks right and then our data So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we should have 8, because 8 words, right? So now we need to look at what data is stored in, um, in, each, in each row. So we, we just look at um, for this whole row right here. So what's the hexadecimal equivalent of all this? Well, our first one, if, if you don't know, um, when we convert binary from to hexadecimal, we can just look at the first four bits, find the uh, hexadecimal representation, and look at the last four. Well, our last four, uh, see, one, two, three, four, that's just zero the whole time. It's only the first four that are changing. So I can, um, I'm not going to write it yet. So let's look at our first four. Well, we have one zero one zero well that's ten in binary or decimal what's that in hexadecimal that's just a so we have a zero stored in there can you see that a zero so let's look at address one this is uh, address one right now we have a zero for the last four but the first four we have zero one one zero which um, which corresponds to I believe six in decimal, which is just six in hexadecimal, and let's look at address three. Um, so we have one zero one zero, and then the last four is zero, so it's just gonna be a zero again. So a zero, and then three address three. Let's uh, here we go. Well, that's just sixty again. And then four. Um, oh, that's easy enough. Uh, well, actually, that's nine. It's gonna be ninety this time. And then 
we will be at 5, so I have 50. And then uh, this one we have, hmm, I seem to be missing one. Well, uh, 5, 6, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, well, I seem to have messed up. So let me check this real quick. Uh, that is 10, so that's correct. 60, that's correct. A0, that's correct. Um, so... 60, yeah, and then 90 should be fine, and then 50, oh, okay, maybe, okay, I think this is just 90 again, yep, that's just 90, and then our last one looks like it's just going to be 50 again, so this is our address, if we are at address 0, then that's our output in terms of hexadecimal. So I hope that all makes sense. Thank you for watching. Uh, hope you guys do well on the quiz on Monday. And good luck.